Hi, everybody. I'm Cindy Gay. How do you hang rugs on the wall? And there are several different ways, but there's always been some of those ways, some of the more common ways um, made me a little uncomfortable. Um, for instance, when you hang a rug on the floor, or hang a rug on the wall, it's supported by one single strand of the backing, basically, that's holding it up, particularly if you sew on like a pocket and then put a curtain rod or something through it, the way they hang quilts. And it probably works okay for quilts, but our rugs are much heavier and the backing is a different animal. You don't have multiple um, layers of fabric to sort of distribute the weight. So I'm a little nervous to hang a rug unless it's something very small on the, on the wall using that method. So the method I use is a wooden frame with the carpet tacks attached to it. Now the reason I do that is I like the option to move a rug from one place to another on a whim with very little damage even though historically once I find a place for it and it works it's going to be there for a long long time so chances are this rug will probably be there over the watch cabinet for a very very long time now this rug is a little unusual in that it's got an arched top so that makes hanging it from a sleeve virtually impossible there's no way to do that so what I am going to do is take the rug off of the frame so that you can see the frame still on the wall. But the problem is I have a very short cord for the microphone. So I am going to go and take that off the wall and I'll be right back. Well, as you can see, it comes down very easily. Um, I've got a lot of experience taking it down because the village of Pemberville went with me to every workshop that I taught at. Um, mainly because I always felt that when I was in a workshop with a teacher, I wanted to see her signature rug. So even though many people have seen this rug before, I always take it with me when I'm teaching a class. So here you can see how it's actually made. It's a wooden frame made out of scrap one by material. And then we take the carpet carpet strips or the tack strips, I think is what they call them. You can buy them at Home Depot. You can either get a bunch of them in a box. It might be good for a guild, kind of a combo thing. I'm sure they're cheaper um, per strip that way. Or you can get them in like a plastic package, maybe five or six of them in there. And you'll just have to measure your frame to see what, how many you're going to need. And you simply nail them on, they come with little nails because you're gonna be nailing them on along the base of your wall, right? When you're putting in wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. So they come with nails already on them. So you pound those into the wood. Now, normally you would be ready to put your rug on it, right? But we need a barrier between the wood and the wool. Wood is not acid-free. Um, think about those old brittle um, newsprint um, newspapers that you see. Um, if you're a scrapbooker, you understand the importance of acid-free. Wood is not acid-free, so it needs a barrier. Now, painting in between all those little nails, you know, that are sticking out to hold the carpet, that's a nightmare. But I found that a good spray with some spray varnish, a couple different coats, does the job, and it does it good enough where it seals it in it doesn't change the look of it too much and yet it protects your wool from the wood okay so once it's all put together a simple spray of spray varnish and then you hang this frame the way you would hang any normal picture um yeah this one is actually you probably can't see them but there's one there and there's one there there's screws grow, going into the drywall. And then this is just literally just sitting on top of those screws. So if I ever have to move this, those are the only two holes in my wall that I'm gonna have to fix. 
I know some people will take the carpet strips and actually pound those into the wall, but I've always had plaster walls, and that would spell disaster for plaster. And it's not so good for drywall either. So that's a great way to kind of get around it. So now, let me see if I've got... Oh, the carpet strips will go all the way around the outside edge, and you can kind of see that going all the way around there. This one you can't see because that wood is a little bit darker for some reason, and there's one right there. Those go across, and it helps to break the weight. So I'm only supporting about this much of my rug on one strip. I'm not supporting the entire length of the rug. Now, I use rug warp, so it doesn't end up getting as saggy baggy as what some other backings do, such as monk's cloth. So rug warp holds up a little bit better, but um, those intermediate supports make a big difference. On those, the nails point up. Everything else, including the bottom one, the nails point out. Okay, now let me go put it back up so you can see that it's almost as easy. For me, it's a little bit more difficult because it's got the curved top, but I take a certain part of the rug and I've got little pencil lines on the frame and it shows me exactly where it needs to go. So that was really quick. I hope it's straight. <laughs> it's not too bad. It looks a little crooked, but uh, not so much that I would fuss too much over it. But it makes it easy up and easy down. Now think about this for seasonal projects. If you hook the same size rug, you could pop one off, pop the new season on very, very quickly. Let's see if there's anything that I wanted to tell you. I made some notes. I told you about the acid-free. That's the most important thing. A little bit of spray varnish and it make, makes it super simple. So I think that's it. That's how, oh, one more. For super lightweight rugs, this is my method. I don't like sewing on the pocket. So this is a rug that I hook for teacher's workshop. It's uh, typically a fine cut shaded rug. I did it with all textures and did it all in reds. And I needed some way to display this. So I bought some acid free foam core. It's the kind, it's thick and it's got like that styrofoam in between the two pieces. Um, and I cut it out to shape because this rug actually has a bit of a scallop on it. And then cut out the inside just so that there's plenty of room for it to breathe. And I figured there was probably enough meat here to support the rug. And it's held up over many, many years. This was done in 2003 and the cardboard has bent at least one time, but it still hangs in the wall okay. And then what I did is I just took needle and thread and just did a stitch here, stitch here, stitch here, stitch here, and just worked my way back and forth all the way around until it was attached. And then this simply sits on a nail. Um, at the old house, it was next to a dresser and my older cat liked to go up there and she would look at it and stare it down. I always wondered what she was trying to figure out until I noticed that she reached up and gave it a little tap and it would swing back and forth and she'd sit there and stare at it. So a little bit of cat entertainment there for you. The carpet is carpet strips pointing down, Star is asking, only on the bottom strip. Everything else they point up. Um, you need kind of think about it as your rug hooking frame where the gripper strips kind of point out on there. Um, she's got it. Okay. So tomorrow, 10 a.m., um, I do my regular webinar and then my computer's back. Hopefully everything works. Um, I'll be there 10 a.m. Eastern at rugcamp.com. You do have to sign up if you um, have never been there before. But once you sign up, it remembers you and it's easier the next time. Um, and there's little circles above the video. So if you wanna go back and watch, it's every video that I've done on that system. Um, I actually started doing weekly Tuesday webinars 
around the first of the year. So there's quite a few weeks there that you can kind of watch. And I've kind of fallen off the wagon a little bit with keeping up with the dog, how to hook the dog. Um, but I will get back to that as soon as I can. But in the meantime, tomorrow is question and answers. So get over there. You'll see the countdown timer with it ticking down. Ask your question below the video. And I will see you there tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.